Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to track your recurring expenses in Microsoft Excel. Today, we're going to build a simple sheet to show all of your recurring expenses. You know, those things you got to pay every week, every quarter, every month, whatever. Right? Your, your rent, your mortgage, your electric bill, whatever. Um, we're going to enter the last paid date and how often it recurs. What's the frequency, right? Weekly, monthly, quarterly, that kind of thing. And then Excel will calculate the next due date automatically. Okay. Now, this is an expert level video. What does expert mean? Well, it's beyond the beginner. It's beyond the, the learning stage, but we're not quite going to do any programming today. So you don't need to worry about VBA. So you definitely should have taken my free Excel beginner one course. It's free. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. Go watch it. If you have not yet, I'll put a link down below. So you have all the basics under your belt. We're going to be using conditional formatting, some functions, and specifically, we're going to be using the date functions, date, e date, year, month, and day. Okay. And the if function, here's the classes that I cover them in. Again, you'll find the links down below. If you want to learn more about these things, I will cover everything you need in this video, but if you want to learn more, here's where you can go to check out the different classes that I cover these in. And of course, when we're done building this in Excel, you know what I do. 90% of what I do is Microsoft Access, right? So in an upcoming video very soon, we're going to do the same thing in Microsoft Access. So look forward to that too. Okay, so here I am in Microsoft Excel. Let's start out by typing in our list of expenses. So expenses, we've got our mortgage. We've got our electric bill and so on. I've got a list already typed up. I'm just going to copy and paste it and not make you watch me type it all in. All right. So there it is. I'm going to widen that column out so everything fits in there. There's my list of expenses. Next is what payment account does this money come out of? This is especially handy if you've got auto pay on stuff like your credit cards, right? If you got something coming out, you want to know it's coming out tomorrow. So what account is the payment account? You got your checking. You got your uh, your Amex, you got your Capital One, and so on. And we'll just mix and match these. So we'll do a couple Amex, copy paste, right? And a couple Capital One, and maybe a checking account down here. How's that? All right. There's your payment accounts. Next up is the amount. Okay. Maybe your mortgage is 2000 your electric's 400 Yeah, I live in South Florida. It's usually $400. Uh, you've got your $8 Microsoft 365 subscription, your bank fee. Uh, you do a weekly deposit into your savings account for your retirement or whatever, right? Groceries, 400 bucks. Cell phone, I don't know, 130 Cable internet, 200 And so on. Let's say 150 and 720 for your Disney annual pass, okay? Again, I live in Florida. All right. <laughs> now, next up here, we got our last paid date. Now, if it's a new account, you're going to have to cheat. If it's a monthly account, just put a date, you know, a month before today in there. But let's put the date we last paid these accounts in here. So I'm going to say uh, June 20. Okay. Now, I like to format my dates as the ISO date standard. So I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick date, short date. There we go. That's the ISO date standard right there. It's unambiguous no matter where you are in the world. If you want to learn more about it, I've got several separate videos on why it's great and everyone should use it. It's my, my quest for my life is to get everyone switched over to the ISO date format. So go watch this video. All right, let's put some more dates in here. Let's go uh, 627 or uh, 24 is fine. Uh, 627. <laughs> uh, let's do a couple of those. Copy, paste, paste. Let's do a few 710s. Copy, paste, paste. Let's do, uh, this will be 6, 5, and 3, 10. You'll see why in a minute. All right, next up, we need to calculate when the next due date is based on this date. But we have to know how often do you pay this bill. Okay, so let's do a quantity and a frequency column. The frequency is going to be an M and M for monthly. All right, so that'll be M, that'll be M, that'll be M. Let's say you do your deposit to savings weekly, but I don't want to bother with a weekly. I'm going to make this daily and make the frequency seven. See what I got that there? It just makes the calculations easier, right? Because days, you can just add days, three days, eight days, 30 days. 
all right? Month, you need a special condition for because you can't, if you add one month, it, the date can move. It's not always the same number of days. Same thing for a year, all right? If you're doing quarter, you do three months. So let's say our pest control down here is three months. It's gonna be quarterly. See what I'm doing? Okay, uh, these will be monthly, 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 and let's say the annual pass is yearly. You can put a Y or an A in there, it doesn't matter. Our formula is gonna look for either DM or anything else, it'll assume is a year, okay? Okay, so here, let's fill these in. One, 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 that's seven days. All right, one, 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 we got three months there and then one year. Okay. So our next do is going to be where our function goes. Okay, to do that calculation. Before we do that, let's pretty this up a little bit. All right. I like to have everything left aligned. That's me. I know accountants like everything right aligned if it's numbers and dates, but I like left aligned. That's just me. All right. And I'm going to highlight this and let's make this green. Just so it, the, the header row shows off. Okay. Now, what's my function going to look like here? Well, We've got three separate instances. We have to look for a D for a day, an M for a month, or anything else we'll assume is a year. You could put a separate condition for a year, but we'll just say if it's, not, if it's not an M or a D, assume it's a year, okay? So this is gonna be a nested if function. We need an if function inside another if function. So we're gonna come up here. We're gonna type in equals if. All right, what's our first condition? If the frequency is a D, okay, where's frequency? Frequency is right there. All right, so if F2 equals a D, comma, what is the value if true? Let me zoom in so you guys can see this better. All right, if it's true, if this is days, then we're going to take the last paid date and add this many days to it. Because remember, in Excel and in Access, if you take a date and add a number to it, that's the number of days you're adding to it. Real simple date math. Okay. All right. Comma. Now, if it's not a D, what are we going to do? Well, now we got to next check to see if it's a month, if it's an M. So we need another if function. This is where the nesting comes in. If, open parentheses. All right. Now let's say if F2, if this guy equals an M, if it's a month, then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to add this many months to that day. Now, there's a function to add months, and it's called edate. Why they named it edate, I, I have no idea. It's just edate. It's been around since the 80s. Edate. All right, what's the start date? Same guy, that guy right there. How many months? Same quantity right there. Close it up. All right, else. Now, here's the else condition. If it's not a D and it's not an M, we're going to assume it's a Y. Okay, so what do you do to add a year? Well, we use the date function and we add to the year component. Okay, so it's going to be date and then year of this value that'll return just 2023. And to that, we have to add this many years. E2. Comma, what month? Well, it's just the month of D2 and then the day of. Close it, close it, close it, close it. <laughs> All right, there's your function. Press enter. All right, 45, 120. What does that mean? Well, we got to format it because it's returning a numeric value. But guess what? Highlight that. Come up here. Pick short date. Boom, there's your date. One month after that one. Now we just autofill this down. There you go. One month, one month, one month, seven days. Yeah, looks about right. One month, three months, perfect. One year, perfect. And that's how you calculate your next due date. I know it's a, it's a long, crazy function. That's the easiest way I can think of to do it in Excel. I've got an easier method in Access. You'll like the one in Access better. Next up, let's do some conditional formatting. I like to highlight these guys with some conditional formatting, the amounts, right? And I like to make it so that the stuff that's more expensive shows up a darker red. So we're gonna use conditional formatting, color scales, and then I like that guy, see? Okay, 2000 is the most expensive thing on here. So you really see when the stuff that's coming up is, you know, needs to be 
right? <laughs> Be careful. That's big boys coming up. All right. So for these, I like to use conditional formatting. And I want it so that if something is late, right, like the date is, is less than today's date, then show it red. So I know, hey, this is past due, right? If it's less than, if it's due less than a week from now, seven days in the future, then I want it to show up in yellow so I know it's coming down the pipe, okay? And then beyond that, it can be green. So I know it's, okay, we're, we got some breather, all right? So we're gonna go to conditional formatting, highlight cells rules. We're gonna go to less than, okay? We're gonna put equals today, open close parentheses, and then hit okay. And now you'll see everybody who's less than today's date, it's currently uh, uh, July 27th. So every date on here less than July 27th, 2023 is showing up in red. That's past due. Okay, let's do the yellow ones if they're coming up within the next week. So select the same range again, conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, less than, all right, equals today plus Seven. We're saying if the date in the field is less than seven days in the future. All right, change this to yellow and hit OK. All right, now they've all gone to yellow. What happened there? Well, what happens is, take a look at the rules here. Select this range. All right, go to Manage Rules and see what happens. All right, the rules are applied in the order shown. All right, this one hits and then it's not getting to this guy. So we're just gonna move this one up. All right, so go here and click up, and then you can stop if true. So if that's true, do that and then stop. And we're gonna do this one likely with this one, right? Because we're gonna put one more on here, hit okay. And there you go, right? Does the red one and stops. All right, one more for the greens, right? Conditional formatting, highlight cells, less than, equals today, let's go plus two weeks out. And we'll make this one green. Hit okay. All right, we gotta do the same thing again. Manage rules, you go to the bottom. And then we'll stop if that's true. Okay, and there you go. It would have to be one day less to fall into that range. Let's change this guy to seven, nine. There we go. So now it fits. None of these fit in that two week range. That's why we didn't see them. So the ones that are past that are all white. You don't got to worry about them for a while. All right. Now you want to sort these by what's coming up. You just click over here. All right. Sort A to Z. Boom. You pay one of them. You just go here to last paid and you use your keystroke to pay to put the payment date in. Uh, control semicolon puts today's date in there. Press enter. And there you go. Now you don't got to worry about that one for a while. All right. Paid the mortgage today. Okay. Control semicolon and then enter. Don't gotta worry about that one for a while. All right, come over here, sort them, and now they move where they belong. See? Nice and easy, and there you go. There's your expense tracker. All right, like I said, next up, we're gonna be doing the same thing in Access. I don't have any screenshots for you to put on the slide here because I haven't done it yet, but it's coming very soon. It's gonna be very similar to this, except a lot of that's gonna be automatic, and the calculation's actually a lot easier. And again, if you wanna learn more about any of the stuff that I covered in this video, conditional formatting functions, those date functions, I didn't put today on this list, you should put today on the list. All right, today. Yeah, this is PowerPoint, leave me alone. All right, there. And yeah, I didn't format this properly as a table. It just It's just for on screen, okay? All right, give me a break. <laughs> Um, and of course, my favorite, the if function, very versatile. If you wanna learn more about all this stuff, check out my website, you'll find links to all this stuff down below. So that's it. There is your Excel tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, my friends. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. And don't forget, if you want more Excel videos, comment down below. I want more Excel. I know it sounds rude, but that's what I want. I want more Excel. Damn it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. Gold members get access to download all of the sample spreadsheets that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, and more. 
Platinum members get access to all the previous perks, plus all of my beginner full courses and one new expert course every week. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for Excel. I also teach Word, Access, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. Now, when you do sign up to become a member, I need you to email me and tell me I want more Excel. The vast majority of my videos are from Microsoft Access because that's on my focus for the past few years. However, I'm happy to add more Excel videos if I get more Excel members. So make your voice heard, and I'll make lots more tech help lessons for Excel. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments that you have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon to select all and receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? If you're watching this video on YouTube, just click the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other related videos, additional information on the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. If you have not yet tried my free Excel Level 1 course, check it out now. It's over 90 minutes long, and it covers all the basics of using Microsoft Excel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and it's free for all members of my channel at any level, even supporters. Just email me and let me know you signed up as a member. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page, and you can send me your question there. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by and check out my Excel forum. Be sure to follow my blog, and of course you can find me on Twitter and YouTube. And as always, thanks for learning with ExcelLearningZone.com. I'm Richard Rost. See you next time.